In this tutorial, we'll be going over three types of catalysts, homogeneous catalysts, heterogeneous catalysts, and biological catalysts, which are called enzymes. Um, so a, hom a homogeneous catalyst is one that is uh, the same. Homogeneous catalyst is the, it's in the same phase as the reactants so the same physical state as the reactants and we'll take a look at an example to to uh, an example reaction to to uh, talk about a homogeneous catalyst so in this uh, in this reaction so the overall reaction that you're looking at in this picture is um, hydrogen peroxide um, and it decomposes very slowly into H2O and O2. This happens very, very slowly. The uh, decomposition of um, hydrogen peroxide. Um, so if you have, um, so this is without a catalyst. And if you add a catalyst, you'll get the following reaction. So if you actually add, so what's going on here is, um, in this picture here, it says in the absence of a catalyst. So this breaks up into O2 and H H2O very slowly. Um, now in this this picture over here, um, some um, in this picture here, some Br minus is added in the form of sodium bromide, and the sodium, of course, is a spectator. So we just show the the Br minus is added. And here's what happens. What it does is it creates a new pathway for the reaction by way of, of making a whole new mechanism. And this mechanism that it makes, this brand new mechanism it makes, it lowers the activation energy. And as we saw from the Arrhenius equation, if you have A e to the negative Ea over RT, if you lower this number here, okay, you'll be taking, you'll be exponentially Aiding uh, smaller numbers, which gives larger results, so that would improve, that would raise the value for K, and thus um, speed up the reaction. So, um, let's take a look at what happens when you add the catalyst. So you have um, Br minus, and it's solubilized. Okay, and it's reacting with. these so br2 so the the reason this is brown is the color of um dissolved bromine gas is brown so you're actually looking at um this is this is actually uh the intermediate in the reaction um and in the second reaction, so overall here there's just one one step, one reaction. But when you add a catalyst, you're going to have uh, the catalyst. So this is our catalyst here. Um, it's going to generate. It's, it's a two-step mechanism which generates a intermediate, which is going to get consumed in the second step. Plus Br2, and then you get two. Br minus, plus O2 gas. So um, you'll see that the uh, bromine gas is actually, it's produced in the first step, and then it gets consumed in the second step. So we call that an intermediate. Um, and the... You'll notice the uh, the Br minus we began with that, and then it ended up being regenerated at the end of this reaction. So we call that a catalyst, one that you start with, and then you, um, uh, and then you you end with it at the end of the reaction. So um, Br two, sorry, Br minus is. 
a catalyst because it's present as a reactant and regenerated as a product. Okay, and uh, BR2 is an intermediate because it's produced in one of the elementary steps. And then consumed in another okay so if we go to our, our next slide here uh, what we're looking at is the uncatalyzed reaction so this is just H2O2 and it decomposes into H2O and O2 so now here in the in the other reaction when we add the catalyst so this is when we add the BR minus um, we're, we're, it's a two-step mechanism, and each step is going to have its own transition state. So this this high energy state right here is called is the uh, transition state. Let's let's draw it up here. So these right here are so we so we have two transition states. one for each elementary step all right elementary step of the proposed of the uh, mechanism um, and you'll notice that overall even if you even though you have two even though you created two of these um, you have this activation energy and you have from here to here you have this activation energy so you actually get two activation energies, one for each step. Um, but if you add both of these, it's still much, much lower than the uncatalyzed activation energy. So we see that overall, um, so let's draw this a, a dotted line here. Okay, and so this is EA uncat. Okay, and we'll see that even even if you... Okay, even if you uh, add this and this, it's still a lot lower than, um, it's it's still lower than the overall here. Okay, so, um, therefore, our, it speeds up the reaction. So, our reaction is going to go a lot faster. Um, you'll notice that right here, this, this little trough right here, uh, corresponds to the intermediate okay so this this is actually where so in our two-step mechanism right here at the in the first reaction is what you started with so right here is where uh, you started so it's two h2o2 plus two br minus And this produced the intermediate. Okay, and then right here at this at this little uh, midway point here, this is our the second reaction that happened, which was where the intermediate gets consumed, and it this corresponds to this equation plus Br two makes two Br plus two H plus plus O two. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and look at a uh, um, heterogeneous catalyst. So this is a, this is a re reaction between uh, ethene gas and hydrogen gas. And you can speed this up by adding uh, some powdered nickel or, uh, or platinum. Okay, and uh, the term here is, um, this right here is the C2 
H4, and this, of course, is the H2. And the term for this happening right here, for these molecules um, adhering to the surface of the catalyst, so this is our, our, our uh, metal, uh, this right here, the purple um, spheres here, this is our metal catalyst. And heterogeneous means it's in a uh, it's in a different uh, phase than the reactants. Um, and what what happens here is by adhering here, what it does is um, and the adhering process is called uh, adsorption. So it's the binding of molecules to a surface. So, and that's usually going to be a metal. And what it does is it improves the orientation. So this. tends to improve the orientation of the reactants and leads to more effective collisions. Okay, it also may depending on the reaction, so it also may provide a new pathway, just like the uh, homogeneous example. And this new pathway has a lower uh, EA, just like the other example. Okay, so catalysts are said to um, work in two ways. Mainly, they lower EA. However, um, in this, in some cases, they may also improve this number, okay? Because as you remember, this number was these two variables, p times, or actually it was z times p. So z was the number of collisions, and p was the number of effective collisions. So if you, if you, what it does is kind of like holds the molecule still, and the hydrogen also adheres to it or adsorbs to the surface, and then the hydrogen. Um, this hydrogen right here, it it it, it provides like a, a a substrate or something for them to attach to, and then it kind of like holds this guy still while this guy like sneaks up onto it and then binds onto one of the carbons. So there, therefore, you get um, you get two extra hydrogens on the carbon. So it kind of like holds it still. So the metal just kind of like snags it, holds it still, and then this guy could come along and then attach to the carbon. Um, and then it keeps it there until the other one comes along and hits the other carbon, and then the product is released. The final product is released. So that's how those that's how those work. Um, and so there's one more catalyst to cover, and those are enzymes. So enzymes are biological proteins which act like act as catalysts. So in our in our uh, in mammals we have literally millions and millions of different I mean, basically have a catalyst for every reaction that happens in our body otherwise they happen so slowly you could even almost consider them as not happening at all and um and even some are like undesirable like the processes that causes age um are are, are catalyzed by free radicals in our body so like the destruction of cells or like the destruction of like collagen in our skin so all this stuff is uh progressed by having catalysts present in our bodies that could speed up these reactions. Um, and so they're said to, um, a, just a couple of terms, and I'm gonna draw a couple pictures to illustrate these terms. So um, so that's that's what an enzyme is. Substrates are, are the reactants that attach onto enzymes. Um, and then enzymes are said to kind of like hold them there until they, until the reacting molecules can react. It's, it's, it's very similar to the heterogeneous example in the previous slide. Um, the middle phase is, is called an enzyme substrate complex, and it's attached by what's called a lock and key model, um, and this provides a new pathway and mechanism with much, much lower activation energy. 
In fact, they're so efficient, biological enzymes, that they can increase the speed of the reaction by millions or million fold or more. Um, and so here's here's a little illustration. So it's usually like the uh, the structure of the molecule. So um, we'll give it some type of shape. Okay, and so that's where that's why we get that's how we get this lock and key model. So here's the enzyme. Okay, so maybe it looks it maybe the enzyme looks like that. So this is our enzyme. Um, and then the substrate would be like these like these uh, couple of reacting molecules. So let's say we have one that it's like a complementary piece like that that goes into those slots um, and then you might have another complementary piece okay right here that goes into this slot um, and when they come together this is called the enzyme substrate so these are these two things here are are the substrates or reacting molecules um, and this is kind of like a Uh, a picture over that's happening over time. Okay, so that's there, and then this one is held in here. It's a piece. It's kind of like these puzzle pieces, and then some stuff happens. So they they interact, and then they form some new. So they form some new thing, or a new product. Okay, and they may have like different chemical structure based on how they're reacting. Um, and again, the enzyme works as, so sometimes the enzyme is uh, denatured, so it's a protein. So it's like this huge molar mass uh, molecule put together by your DNA um, after, after, uh, after uh, transcription and translation. So um, based on your, your coding. So some people, for example, like, let's say you have like a, lactase okay and then you have um, lactose lactose is just one molecule that would be like the substrate from milk okay and uh, so this if you have lactase present so it can it can break apart lactose and turn it into lactic acid or, or whatever the biological bi uh, end product of that is um, if people are lactose intolerant it means that they they're missing this enzyme lactase um, and then so lactose just kind of builds up in your gut and you you don't have that enzyme in your stomach or your uh, lower in, intestine and where it's um, all the chemical breakdown happens. And you could have all this lactose that ends up in your stomach and gives you all these problems, which just sits there and builds up. So that's what happens if you don't have like the uh, maybe something happened with the DNA code. Maybe it was genetic. So maybe you don't have like the information that codes to create this protein lactase that breaks down lactose. So this might, the, the lactose molecules might sit around your stomach, cause problems. So sometimes the enzyme sticks around. Sometimes it's only good for one reaction. Your body has to make more of it. Okay, and then so this is released, the product here. And it, it works much the same way. It lowers the activation energy. Okay, and that's uh that's the end of our tutorial. Okay, I'll see um and we'll we'll go over some example problems in class.